60. Oh! We did it! Frostclaw. I've been getting a lot of questions in my stream about the build I've been playing. I have currently pushed to 1100 corruption. This is purely self-found gear, nothing really really crazy. A lot of the other Frostclaw builds are using uh, Merchant's Guild to uh, sort of get some pretty crazy stuff. And I'm just going to try and make this a little bit more realistic and show you, for one, you do not need an LP Twisted Heart. Here I have Int but you do not need Frostclaw. It's not necessary to sustain mana, and I do have all of the additional cast nodes in the tree, but I'm still totally fine on mana, and I'm going to explain exactly how that works, so I know a lot of people are struggling with mana cost. Uh, so quickly, I'm going to jump into my spreadsheet. So I put this tool together that should help you figure out your mana cost issues. Uh, so if you've been having trouble sustaining your mana with Frostclaw, this will be your best friend. Basically, all the cells in green, you can edit based on your build, and then that will tell you your net mana cost per cast. So you can see here with my current setup, I'm at a net cost of negative 1.4. That is because I recover on average 21.6 and I spend 23. Uh, so what I have is I have two idols with 14% efficiency. I have one point in celerity. Uh, so here, let's go to the go to the tree. So I only have one point here because I don't have levels on my twisted heart. And this is all you need to sustain. You need minus three here, three to three gift of winter, one point here, and then all of these nodes which give you more casts, which proc gift of winter. So here is what that looks like in here. You can see if you do not have a point of celerity your net mana will be about minus 3.5 with five-ish casts per second. You'll be at negative about 18 mana per second, so pretty unsustainable. So this is very important that you have this. Same with the idle. If you only have one, 20 mana per second negative. This is very, very hard to, to make up with mana regen, so just keep that in mind. I don't actually have any mana regen on my gear other than what comes on the uniques. Just, that's pretty much it, and that's all you need. Um, yeah, so anyway, back to the build. It generates an insane amount of ward. This is one of the huge uh, perks of this build, extremely tanky. Here's a clip from my most recent stream where I'm fighting a 1100 Corruption Emperor. You can actually see here the ward reaches the overflow amount where it starts to flicker as I go to 65 and a half thousand. So pretty crazy. Not many builds can do that, especially non-bugged builds. Um, yeah, so let's quickly jump into the game and go over some of the gear. So this is my current gear. I have a Prismatic Gaze. You need this for base crit because most of our damage comes from Spark Charge and otherwise you won't get anywhere near crit cap. So you absolutely need this. Uh, having 4% crit as a roll is top priority, way higher priority than having LP, but if you do get LP, try and slam int onto it if you can. Here is the ladle. This is very important because you get cast speed per int, uh, more spell damage, some ailments, and it's not super hard to get LP on. So here, your number one priority is slamming cast speed because cast speed scales all of your per cast buffs, like you get extra ward, extra all sorts of stuff per cast. So cast speed is very important, slam that. Crit multi is really good here, spell crit chance is good here. Uh, there's a few other good things, but those are kind of the main ones. 
Here is the unstable core. The main thing around this is you get some damage, you get plus level of skill, which we need for our frost claw, and you can slam int onto it for all of our int scaling. Here we have Fragment of the Enigma. I have T7 Crypt Multi slammed. That's probably not the best slam. I think T7 Cast Speed is best in slot here. And then after that, Crypt Multi or Spell Crit as a T5. Uh, this is also extremely important here. You see plus one to lightning skills. Our Frost Claw is converted to lightning from the tree. So we get one extra level from Enigma. Spark Charges apply. We get a bunch of damage from that. That's good stuff. Super core for the build. Uh, for rings, I have two red rings. These give a bunch of DR, a bunch of armor from all attributes. They give some int, and they cap out our resist without much effort. So these, if you're COF, you can do the ring prophecies. Eventually, they're, they will drop for you, but they are pretty rare. So just keep that in mind. Here I have a weaver's glove. So this gives all attributes, and I have a T7 int on it as well. So that takes this to 20 int provided, which is probably pretty close to best in slot. I also get shred. We hit probably 50 plus times per second with all of our procs and frost claw stuff. So uh, as you saw in the previous clip, I was able to get to over a thousand stacks of shred pretty quickly. Um, it also gives a bit of more damage, but a cast speed. And yeah, the all attributes give strength, which gives armor, so that's also nice. For the boots, I have Telfoons. Uh, this just gives int, which is the main thing, a bit of move speed, and you slam int onto it. For Twisted Heart, uh, you don't even need an LP Twisted Heart, because it's, it's pretty rare, you need to farm quite a lot. Uh, here I slam T7 int, because I realized I didn't actually need levels of Frost Claw, and int gives us basically everything we need, crit chance, ward retention, damage. Um, yeah, it's it's extremely powerful, and flat damage on Enigma, as I said. So for some alternatives, if you're using the Claw build, I'll link, uh, Ali had a video on this, I'll link that in the description, so check that out if you want to try Claw. If you use this, you don't need Prism Gaze, because you have the crit. And then an alternative you could use would be Crest of Unity. If you have enough plus levels of uh, your Frost Claw, you don't need the core. A defensive option could be Static Shell for more armor. Another way to get plus levels could be Omnis, which will also help you with your resists. The only problem is you lose the less damage taken from this neck, which is extremely important. Uh, for belts, this is another alternative. You spend a lot of mana on this build, so mana gained as ward is very important. Ward retention is important. If you can get LP on this, this is great. If not, Exalted Belt is totally fine. For rings, a really good option is Jorah Stardial. This goes up to uh, an additional 32 int when it procs, so this has like a one-third uptime. It's pretty strong, gives you spell damage, gives you mana spent as ward, all sorts of good stats. This is a really, really good option, especially if you don't have red rings. Another, you can just use a any exalted ring with T7 or T6 int. If you don't have any of that, another cheap budget option would be Ferrobors. So here it gives up to 18 int and a bunch of armor, some res. Uh, this is generally a pretty good starter ring. A glove alternative would be an exalted with int. Cast speed is also good, shred is good. Reduced bonus damage taken from crit is good. And a boot alternative could be Blood of the Exile. It gives strength, which as I said, a bunch of armor, int, and a little bit more move speed than Telfoon's. So these are also a really good option. We'll finish looking through the skills really quick. So we already talked about Frost Claw. Another thing that's extremely important for mana sustain is Ellie Nova. It's very important that this is zero mana. You get that through this. If this is not zero mana, you're going to have a problem. This node is really important for applying spark charges. You can see here our spark charge is a huge chunk of our damage. So this is very, very important. Prioritize this node. This here is what gives us huge AoE. In the Flame Rush, this is mostly just mobility. We convert it into cold so that it fits into our cold fire cold for runic, we'll talk about in a second. But this gives us some buffs, it gives us some ward, it gives us a bit of DR. 
and some other uh, some other nice perks. A bit of frenzy here gives us cast speed, so this is uh, pretty high value. For runic, as we mentioned, we do frost, fire, frost. For way of frost guard, this is a bunch of dr and a bunch of ward. You can see here, I uh, get a really really good defensive layer from that. So this is very important. Uh, it also gives us a bunch of ward and some other perks and buffs and stuff. So just follow along with this. Very strong defensive skill. Our flex spot is Flame Ward. Just pop this whenever it's off cooldown. It gives you a bit of ward retention, which helps sustain your ward. Gives you haste. Gives you a bit of damage reduction. Uh, and some other ward stuff. So that's just generally good to use. It helps you pop up your ward really handy. You can swap this out if you want. Uh, you actually don't need to have Nova on your bar, so here I put Snap Freeze uh, as a defensive skill and also as a cold tagged spell. For the build credit where credit is due, originally this build first popped up here. Uh, I will link this video in the description if you want to see where the idea post 1.0 came from. This is it. There's also a Frostbite variant, which is pretty cool, from Bina, so check that out if you're interested in that. And there is a Claw version using Lightning Blast, uh, a lot of really cool stuff in there. This is a build from Ali, I'll link that as well. So these are some other options if you want to experiment with different things. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for me for today. Cheers.